Morning, folks. Uh, I'm here with uh, Nicole Paniotu, one of our longest-term members and uh, a very successful salon owner from uh, the little country town of Sale in Victoria. Thanks for joining me, Nicole. Hello. <laughs> You've been in business there for a long time. Tell us the story. How did you start? I started uh, with a little salon behind a hairdresser's with just two treatment rooms. And um, I didn't really, I was going through a bit of a, could I say midlife crisis at 21? Not sure, but anyway. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, so I thought, oh, let's open up a business. Crazy. Um, and that's how I started. I just had two rooms. I worked on my own. I put a little ad in a newspaper to do, um, I think it was like, $30 pedicures or something like that and I got bombarded with people and I hired my first staff member like four or five months in and yeah two and a half years later I thought what am I going to do do I go overseas and backpack no that's not me so I opened up a bigger salon and we have um, 11 treatment rooms now we just had our 10th birthday this year and yeah, that's us. So you started from scratch with next to nothing yes. and yep. you're now turning, you're the biggest, you're by far the biggest in town, aren't you? Yep. So how many, Definitely. how many residents live in your little town? In sale alone, um, there's 13,000, but we're sort of the main town for little towns around us. So we have a lot of surrounding farming community and smaller sort of towns as well so you were 21 when you started yeah and yeah really had no idea about business yeah no idea no nothing. so what was the learning curve you're learning every day um i ugh. I joined worldwide. I think I'd been in business for a year and I realized I needed to do something different when I was getting these things called tax bills. Funny things those, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh, what do I do here? I've got no money because I'm 21 and I've been having really good weekends. Um, so, yeah, I joined worldwide and... Um, they, you guys have taught me so much um, and yeah and then I, I got an accountant and and then yeah realized you have to be a grown-up at some point in business. <laughs> <laughs> so you joined our uh, membership program and you got all of our marketing materials what happened um, after that I went to one of your like seminar day things and I'd never even, even you know, realised that those things happen. And I, um, there was a few different speakers, and I signed up with you guys then. Um, after that, I, um, I had to put on another staff member because we just put, we did things like a newsletter and birthday vouchers, and I. Um, I think I did a Hollywood woman. Remember those things? But one of our one of our famous promotions, yeah. Yeah, and I I pounded the pavement with that, and um, and then I yeah had to put another staff member on, and we battled through in the small salon with three of us, just working around the clock to sort of fit people in and work around each other, and. And then, yeah, we realised, I, re I went through, a, a, yeah, I went through a stage where I wasn't sure whether to keep being in business or go travelling and be young. And I decided that I was going to stay in business and, um, yeah. What do you love about being in business? I love the challenge. I love being challenged every day. There's never a dull moment in my life, as you know. Um, yeah, I, I love the challenge of it because it's not easy ever. 
All right. Well, what do you hate about being in business? Staff. <laughs> well, as they say, you know, business would be so much easier if it weren't having to uh, employ staff and have customers. This is so true. So true. So you built the business and you built the business and you built the business using a lot of the marketing tools and templates and systems we, we, uh, we teach. Yes. Then you got married and had a couple of little kids. Yes. And how did that impact on the business? Um, with my first child, I didn't really take a lot of time off because I thought that Blush was going to fall to pieces. However, it didn't. Um, with my second child, I hired a manager and I pretty much, I nearly had a year off. I worked, you know, random days. I didn't have set days. And oh my God, the salon did not fall to pieces. And it was awesome. And it was, I've um, found a new appreciation, I guess, for my business and for my staff and for my life, really. Um, and yeah, it, when you work on the instead of in the business, you are a lot more, can I say successful? I don't know. It's a, it's a different, there's a difference. Working. What have you found the difference being off the tools compared with on the tools? You can see what's happening more in your business when you're looking from afar rather than working in it all the time. Um, you can keep track of what's happening with your team and you can work on things so that your team are constantly busy. Whereas if you're constantly busy with clients, you don't have a lot of time to do anything else, which is what I'm currently doing. So I'm back in the salon on clients four days a week. Because you can't find enough stuff. Because I can't find stuff. Because okay. we've built this business up and I've gone from having eight to nine staff to having four to five. Um, so yeah, I've built up this great business with lots of clients, but I just don't have the staff to service these clients. So, um, I'm hoping that next year, 2018, we can, um, change that so I can go back to being on the business. Do you, uh, well, you, 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 you started as a 21 year old working full time on the, on the, on the clients. Yes. Um, what have you found the difference being between working on the clients and working on the business? Your business is so much better when you're working on it. Although you don't think it is because you're not seeing actual dollars come into your bank account from working on it, you will see them coming in because your staff are better, you can do more marketing, you can work on figures and you can do a lot more things when you have the time away from clients. Don't get me wrong, I love, I'm loving being back on clients, but it is, it makes night times in my house very busy because I'm trying to do all that stuff still. Tell me the, 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 the biggest thing that you've learned being part of a group like ours. The support is amazing. And um, a lot of members will see, especially on the Facebook group, if I'm having a bad day, I'll express it. <laughs> um, and the support has just been amazing. And um, having people, like-minded people to bounce ideas off, um, and there's just so many things, so many like marketing ideas that you can use if you're sort of having a bit of a lull time in your business. But I think also being organized with it, we don't really have lull times because we're prepared for that because of the things that worldwide have provided us. So we're pretty consistent throughout the year. Obviously there's busier times but because I have put in systems and marketing plans and things like that, I, we don't get that anymore. So tell me about your marketing plans. You're a, you're a big one for systems. You're a big one for having a calendar that, that essentially you, you load up with stuff the year ahead. Um, yeah. 
how has that impacted on the business? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And your staff are aware of what's coming up. Um, we've, you know, I've been doing it for probably, it would be eight years now at least that I've been doing that for. So I have a yearly planner in my office at home that has got literally the days that I am doing things and, um, you know, the months leading up to Mother's Day, for example. Um, I know when I need to start my, like, planning for that to get it out in time and, um, yeah, having our little newsletters and all that sort of stuff, the birthday vouchers. And the first of the month is always crazy because that's when all that sort of stuff happens. So, um, yeah, it just it makes your life so much better because you know what's coming up and you know you can look from um we had a we had a pretty um i can say average august um down here so i know that next year i need to do something else other than what we've just been doing to sort of bring that back up so i'm already prepped for august next year <laughs> now that's interesting now um as you know, we talk to a hell of a lot of salon owners and mm -hmm. one of the big things that come, comes out of a lot of those conversations is I'm, I'm too busy to do lots of other stuff to market the business. Mm -hmm. And from what you're saying, it's, it's very structured and very easy and, yeah. and, and it's just a linear process. But I get the feeling that it is helter-skelter sometimes. It's not, it's not perfectly smooth. No. Definitely not. But, you know, I put in the hours and I, I put in the effort so that I get bored really easily. And I think if I'm bored, then what are my staff? So I've got to keep thinking of new and exciting things to keep everyone motivated, including myself. So, um, I, and I know week to week what I've got to get done. And I know the planning that I have to get done. Jan and Feb, you know, can potentially be really quiet. So we've, you know, got them sorted. But that's happened in October to get them sorted. Okay, so you're working months in advance. But, but mm. listening to you talk, a, a lot of people watching this or listening to this, this uh, as a podcast would go, oh, she's, she's successful because she's got, um, you know, she's got staff and, and, and she can just spend time organising herself. But... I only have one or two staff and, and it doesn't work for me. I mean, yep. it works for you because you put in the hours. That's right. That's You've right. got two little kids and you still burn the midnight oil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you have to. You can't, you can't expect to have good things if you're not willing to put in the effort. And trust me, I've had those times where I'm like, I just can't even deal with it. But then you go, well... I haven't put in the effort, so then I really want that whatever you want to buy. I'm a shopper. I love spending money. I've got to have it in my account to be able to do that. <laughs> Very true. Um, um, and, and one of the things you touched on was being a member of a high-profile, like-minded group. Um, mm. A lot of people try to do it on their own. Yeah. and It's, it's not like a sign of weakness when you ask for help. I think it's, you know, it it probably has made me the business owner that I am today has a lot of credit to worldwide because it you have these people that um, are, are there, you literally are there to help and they've got the answers to pretty much all the problems that you'll have in a hair or beauty salon issue. Um, and it, it, has, it has made my life, a lot easier i guess because it's all done for you and it's proven to work well I'm most owners have made the mistakes for up and coming people yeah yeah bear in mind that there's nothing new in the world uh, any challenge that you've had you have has been solved by somebody somewhere yes and why try to reinvent the wheel that's right so what you've done is not try to reinvent the wheel. You work, uh, the wheel. You've just copied what's worked for other people. Yeah, and I've made it my own. Um, and when I first started with Worldwide, um, 
you know, the response from clients are like, I've, I've never seen anyone like your marketing is amazing. And I'm like, well, oh, thank you. Like, you know, it, that they hadn't had anyone that cared for their clients that wanted to um, show them things that they could do, I guess. And um, I guess in hair and beauty, we think that our clients, no one else can do that treatment. You know, they, that girl's not going to do her service as well as I do. Um, but, you know, if you work on the business, you have time to train your staff your clients will learn to love someone else as much as you and they'll appreciate you more because you're going to have the time to reward them with a birthday voucher or, you know, send them a text message to say, hey, um, we're doing this facial promo for the month of June. Love to come in and see it. Whereas if you're working on these clients all the time, you don't have time to do that. It turns you from being a, a technician into being a business owner and public relations person, doesn't it? Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong, I clients love to see my face in the salon and I always will stop and have a chat and whatever and I think they appreciate the salon owner being in the salon, but I could be sitting there on my laptop, you know, doing things. It's not always, um, you know, painting nails and waxing eyebrows. So we, I do do a lot of stuff in the salon and clients love to see you and um, tell them about you know, life. Is, is there any challenge that you've come across in business uh, that can't be solved uh, as a marketing issue apart from getting staff? Yeah, getting staff. I mean, any, just about any challenge in business is a marketing challenge, isn't it? Yeah, and I think, you know, marketing to get your name out, to get people to know who you are and what you're about is so important. Um, I think a big challenge in business is, is time, but everyone's time poor. So, you know, you just have to make the time to do it. Because well, how do you make the time? How, how do you make the time? I mean, you get home from work and you've got two toddlers yep. who demand yep. your, uh, your input and there's not much you can do until they go to bed, is there? No. I, I do it when they go to bed. I get up early in the mornings. Um, I, I, know, I just know that I've got to do it. I have a list on my phone um, that I need to get through each week. And I just have to, I just know I've got to get it done. So how early do you get up in the morning? Uh, five or six o'clock, depending on my, some one my baby he is one and a half and he doesn't like to sleep every night so it depends on how rough a night we have but five six o'clock usually so if up. you've got two little kids and you can get up at 5 a.m and work through till midnight if necessary yeah uh, people who don't have kids presumably yeah. could do at least I'm not, I'm not saying don't sleep but i'm just saying make some things priorities if you don't have kids then you know, do it over dinner. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know. I, I just know what I want to do and what I want to achieve. And I guess now that I have kids, I have certain, um, you know, expectations in myself because I want to have things in my life. So I do just have to do it, I guess. And I love spending money, so I need to earn it. <laughs> Well, there's the old joke about my brother's wife who had her credit card stolen and he didn't report it for a month because the thief was spending less than she was. Well, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you just, I think if you set yourself a, even a daily target to start with, a weekly target, um, and make a list of the things that you want to get done and prioritise that, I think is one of the best things you can do and at the start like starting out it's not easy and it is so time consuming it's not going to happen overnight and you might spend hours like my christmas cards we send christmas cards to every single client my husband this year was like if i see another christmas card i look out like our dining room table for two months was just covered in vouchers and Christmas cards and 
everything. So, you know, it's not easy um, and it's not going to happen quickly, but you, know, you want the result, you've got to put the time in. Yeah, so success is messy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you probably will fight with your husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever you may be with, but it's worth it in the end because it, if you're going to be in business, you're giving it your all. Yeah. yeah. And I don't um, like to come second. I like to be number one. And you've got to work at it. And you are number one in town, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Um, and others are always trying to knock you off. Absolutely. And yeah. so to stay number one, you've got to keep pouring in the marketing. You've got to keep pouring in online and offline. I mean, you do both, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a learning curve. Like I, um, I hate technology. I'm so bad at it, but I've got these girls that can fling an ad on Facebook or Instagram or do a Snapchat in three seconds before I've even opened the app. So that's their job. So a delegation is also, I guess, a good thing and learning what to delegate and how to do it. Cause I'm control freak too. Um, is another challenge. <laughs> so one of the key takeaways from what you're talking about is that you don't rely on one uh, form of getting clients. You don't rely on one thing like uh, Facebook or no. Google or um, direct mail. You're doing all of them. Yeah. We don't, I guess, um, when I first started with Worldwide, um, Direct mail was a massive thing. Like we did a lot of that. I used to mail out my newsletters um, every single month and that would take time. Um, we don't do that now. We, um, it, it's too expensive for Australia Post and it's so time consuming and because we do have so many clients. Uh, but we do mail out a newsletter, uh, a birthday voucher to every client. And at Christmas time, everyone gets a Christmas card. And clients love that. Like you do not get, you only get bills in the mail these days. Mm. So to get something nice, um, yeah, clients love it. Yeah. 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 Well, that's been um, a fantastic thing to hear of how you've done everything. Um, you've, you've, you've hustled and you've fought yeah. and you've kicked and scratched your way to the top. Yeah. Um, and it's inspirational to hear how you've done it um, with certain disadvantages. I mean, you are time poor. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's it must be inspirational for other salon owners to hear that it can be done in a small town. Yeah. Out in the scrub. What sort of advice? What What's the biggest piece of advice that you could give? a salon owner who's either struggling or just starting out? Um, find some time and work out what you want to achieve um, and do some bloody marketing. <laughs> Get your name out there and, um, you know, if you're just starting out and you've only got a few clients, then pick your best ones and get them to tell all their friends about them and, you know, reward your clients for helping you along the way um you know it, it giving someone a 20 dollar voucher doesn't cost you 20 dollars they might use it for an eyebrow wax which costs you seven cents like you know you've got a giving a little can get you a lot it sure can particularly yeah. to attract a new client yeah and you know working out what a client is worth to you per year um and and you know just Put, putting in the effort is going to get your reward. But if you, you know, half half do it, then you get half the reward. So you know what a client is going to be worth to you in a year? Absolutely. So give us some numbers. So we average on clients spending between $100 and $200 a year. A year? Uh, each month, sorry. Each month, yeah. 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 So you're looking so at 1500 Yeah, $2,000 a year. Yep. On average. Yeah. So it's worth you saying, well, I'm going to spend $100 to get a new client. Absolutely. 
because that client's worth up to two thousand dollars to you in a year Absolutely. that's a concept that a lot of business owners don't understand yeah it's the concept of giving away part of a profit you never would have got mm. to get a profit that was never going to happen anyway yeah yeah and you know um and everyone knows this if you give a bad service that person's going to say tell 10 or 20 people if you give a good service they'll probably tell two but those two people that could be five thousand dollars in your pocket you know so you've got to look on the bright side of things i guess as well Fantastic so talking to you. Those negative days. <laughs> That's right. Everyone has them, and I'm sure you do too. Yeah. Um, and, Nicole, you know, drink wine. Wine always helps. Wine always helps. Yeah, absolutely good advice. Folks, if uh, you're watching this or listening to this and uh, you want some help, go to worldwidesalonmarketing.com. Um, plenty of ways to contact us. Uh, you too can have a business like Nicole has built up over a relatively short time, 10 years. Um, and uh, we can help you do a lot of that. So thank you, Nicole. Appreciate your time today. You. Onward and upward and have a great Christmas. Yeah, you too.